when it comes to marketing and branding, uh, essentially the work that I do is going to be in one of three spheres, right? Generally, marketing is about attention, that's one, creative, that's two, and product, that's three. So let's start with attention. Three types of attention. And the type of attention is going to determine how you engage. Attention number one is the one that you buy. Literally spend money so you can get in front of people. Whether it's through advertising, pay-per-click ads, Facebook ads, what have you, right? Sponsorships, you are, there's a limitation as to how much attention you can buy because your budget is limited. The challenge of buying attention is that there's always that issue and lack of credibility, right? Take for example, Bloomberg, buying up a lot of ads, right? He's trying to, you know, there's gonna be a lot of communication. He might even get a lot of coverage because he has a big budget, but how much of it is credible, right? Now, the second type of attention is the complete polar opposite. It's very difficult to buy it, and if you could, you wouldn't be able to afford it, which is borrowing attention, okay? Borrowing attention is all about hustle. Right, borrowing attention is about getting on the platforms that you don't own, right? And you get on a uh, simple example, right? If an instructor is trying to build awareness about themselves, they don't want to spend the money to get that awareness, they will go on the speaker circuit, for example, right? They'll go on conferences. They don't own the conferences, they don't put on the conferences. I used to work for the National Retail Federation. We would put on the events for the retail industry. We would have people from like Microsoft and Dell and Amazon be like, hey, we want to present on your platform to showcase to people what we've done so that way other vendors or clients could be potentially open to what we have to offer, right? But the person attending the conference, they see somebody speaking on a stage, boom, straight, like authority, right? Oh, they're on the stage, so they know what they're talking about. Uh, nine times out of 10, most of those people that got on the stage got on the stage because they requested to. Or they, I wanna speak, I wanna present. Uh, or they have somebody on staff whose job is to literally reach out Back in the early days um, with Ammar, one of the things that we did was we put together a poetry video. Now, it would be one thing to release that video on uh, YouTube and hope that people watch it. But instead, what we did was I set a date for the release. I reached out to 100 different bloggers and, and Twitter accounts and whatnot, and I'd be like, hey, we're gonna, this video's gonna drop. I think it's gonna be something of value to your audience, appealing to their nature. And uh, so is this, if, if that is, if my assumption is correct, would you send it out to your list, your audience, your website, your blog on this date? Out of those several hundred, I think close to 100 responded in the positive. And then when the video came out, you have all these people tweeting, retweeting, and then there's this momentum. And this is how politics a lot of the times happens. It's like whenever you see a lot of people, like a Twitter storm, it doesn't happen randomly. It's organized. You have a bunch of people that come together to create a lot of noise and that noise ends up carrying momentum, right? There's different creative ways in which you can borrow attention, but the name of the game here is hustle. And the third type of attention is the attention that you own. On an individual level, that's your reputation, your own credibility, the regular awareness that you have. On an institutional level, it's your brand, right? Coca-Cola is not gonna put up a billboard and say, buy two, get one free. They'll put up Coca-Cola happiness, something like that. Apple, they're not gonna say, get a $500 discount on the new Apple iPhone, right? No, that's what the local uh, Verizon dealer or Sprint dealer is gonna do. But Apple literally shoot, puts up a picture says, shot with the iPhone, right? Simple, they don't have to uh, sell, so to speak. They already have your attention. They have credibility going back 30 plus years. They just leverage that. So that is basically attention in a nutshell. The second part is the creative, and the creative is directly related to the type of attention that you have. If you, now creative is anything in the form of audio, video, text, presentation, or combination thereof, right? And so when you have creative, but you're trying to deploy that creative against the attention that you've bought, that same creative is not gonna work with the attention that you borrowed. Case in point, Avengers comes out, all right? There's a trailer, a movie trailer, basically says, coming out on this date. Now, that 
is the creative that's going to be deployed against the attention that they have purchased, right? Which is for TV commercials, which is for whatever advertising. But at the same time, when they are borrowing attention, i.e. Robert Downey Jr. is going out on Conan O'Brien's show, on Jimmy Kimmel, on uh, all these other uh, daytime, late night type of shows, they might play the trailer, nine times out of 10 they won't, they might play even just a clip, but 90% of that engagement, where they're borrowing that attention, is creating something unique for that show, for that platform. Uh, Jimmy Fallon is known for doing a lot of fun gags and whatnot. Uh, Conan O'Brien, these guys, they'll do an interview. They're not gonna play something that was created otherwise. They want something unique and specific for that particular moment. So, uh, therefore, the creative that you have, when you're, lever when you're deploying that creative against the particular attention, it has to be contextual to the attention. And similarly, when you, ha when you own attention, Right? The people that already know you, they don't want to be sold. Right? They don't want to be like, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. You could do that. But at the end of the day, be like, look, I know you for solving a specific problem. You have a particular reputation. You have a particular credibility. Show me creative that is in relation to that. Right? An example of this is Red Bull. Red Bull, it is a form of buying attention. But what they're actually doing is that they're putting on these events. So they own that attention. It's their platform, it's their event. And, and they'll have a bunch of these riders and this is where they're buying the attention where their logo is gonna be on these riders. Their whole thing isn't that, oh, buy Red Bull. No, they're communicating what Red Bull is. What is it about, right? That's what their reputation is. Reputation is all about why you do what you do and how you do it. And so as long as people know that, you've got your brand, you've got your credibility. If people trust why you do what you do and how you do it, then uh, you've got it made with that one individual. But you do that over the masses, you do that over a community, uh, that's how you build an institutional brand, okay? Now, when it comes to product, right, which is the third sphere of marketing, uh, it has to do, and again, product is directly uh, um, de uh, determined and it is connected to the creative. So you have a product, the first question to ask, what else is in the marketplace like it? A company might come out with a camera, right? Is it the first camera? Was it, now there was a time where a company was the first company to come out with a camera. Back in the 1900s, Lumiere Brothers, they developed, they basically hacked a film camera to just continuously take photos for 16 uh, photos a second for like a few seconds and boom, you had like the first cinematic pieces, right? But nobody was in like in the market like, oh, I wanna buy a camera. It just kind of became like this novel, unique, interesting thing. When they designed it for the consumer, eventually, that's when people are like, oh, I can, I can film my kid's soccer game. Right? I can film a lecture, right? And so that's when it became something in the marketplace. Now it became a question of like, how can we help people solve a specific problem? Case in point, Sony, the problem they solved really, really well, and even Canon, is that they can focus on the subject really well without you having to do anything. You just tap on the screen, walk away, boom, that person's gonna be in focus. Panasonic, on the other hand, they couldn't autofocus to save their company. But you run around with that camera, things are gonna be smooth. Right, it's just like, like the whole thing, they got the floating sensor inside. Again, they're solving a problem in a different way. It becomes a question of now the consumer, what is it that they want? What do they value more? And therefore you create market segments. So when you, have a, when you come out with a product or a service or a calling or a cause, it's a question of what is the actual problem that you're solving within the lives of people? Who else is trying to solve that problem? Okay, and how are you solving it differently in a way that none of them have been able to do so? Another clear case in point, martial arts, right? For the longest time, uh, Bruce Lee comes in, introduces Kung Fu. Karate Kid comes in, introduces karate, right? And then in the, in the 90s, the uh, Gracies come in, they introduce Jiu Jitsu. Jiu Jitsu is so different in the sense that uh, we can beat any martial artist. How? We just take them to the ground, right? They won't know how to punch or kick laying on the floor but we'll just you know, uh, turn them into a pretzel and fold their clothes with them in it and game over, 
right? And all of a sudden, everybody's like, yo, we got to learn this new uh, style, which is not really new. It's always grappling and wrestling has always been in um, military going back ages. But it was just a matter of uh, in, in popular culture, how was it perceived? So again, the problem here, people want to defend themselves. People want to be able to fight. Now, different uh, products, different styles offer a different way to solve that problem. So that is basically marketing in a nutshell. Um, just a quick thing on the creative. I forgot to mention uh, uh, the kind of creative that you deploy against advertising. Uh, it goes back to the product scenario. What's the problem that you're solving and how is it different? And so, and even in the creative that you produce for the bartering, that still has to be communicated. Right, but in the branding, people know that you solve a problem. The question is, why do you exist? All right, and even then, if you can communicate why you exist before you communicate the problem that you're solving, that's also a um, that's also a strong position to have. Cool. All right, so that's the end of the uh, marketing one one intro. That basically covers uh, uh, you know your undergrad and master's degree, and uh, now let's workshop. Let's ask. Let's open up questions. What are your challenges? What are the things that you're having uh, struggling with?